Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all going? This your boy, Rob Thomas Jr. Um, all you have today is June 16, 2019. I want to take the time to wish everybody out there a true father, a happy Father's Day, man. I'm over here at my brother's house, man. You know, just, you know, getting it in, man. But man, when I look at things, man, on this earth, I look at the assault on fathers, especially black fathers. It's crazy. But first of all, let me say happy Father's Day to the greatest two fathers I've ever known. That's my heavenly father, the one who gave me life, who created me rather, and then to Baby Ray, who up there in heaven. Rest in peace, Pops. I know I look at being a father, man, as um, the most serious thing that I ever done or ever could do. You know, I just want to be half the father that my daddy was. Yeah, forgive me. I get emotional on Father's Day because my daddy ain't here and he was my hero, man. But what I try to do is take the lessons that Baby Ray taught me. I feel like if I could just be half the father my daddy was to me to my son, I'd be doing a great job, man. I'd be emotional because lately I've been sick. You know, a lot of stuff been coming up. And I see the plight of the black father, man, which is, in a lot of cases, is non-existent. Y'all forgive me, man. It's non-existent in the black community somewhat. But, you know, they try to tell us publicly that black fathers are, are not in our home, man. I see so many young black men out here taking care of their kids, man. I see a lot of young black men out here struggling, man. You know what I'm saying? But they still there with their kids. I see a lot of men who really want to be in their children's lives, but according to a lot of the uh, things that go on with their uh, children's mother, they're not allowed to be in their children's lives. I see grown men cry because they can't be in their kids' lives. What's up, Liam? Happy Father's Day to you, man. How you doing, Miss Lewis? And again, y'all forget me, I get emotional because I miss my dad. So what I try to do is make my, the memory of my father happy by being a, uh, the best father I can be to Zante. Although this little dude here, man, he be driving me because he tries to imitate me so much, man, which lets me know that as a father, man, even though, like, right now, times are hard right now for me, man. It's like a lot of things is going against me. I mean, you know, financially, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. Back in the day, man, i get out there in them streets, and I never had a problem. But being a good father today lets me know if something happens to me, man, I go to jail. Where's my son going to be? That's what Father's Day means to me, man. Father's Day means to me, man, that the Creator provides my every need so for my little man as long as I do it in a legitimate way and trust in the creator he's going to provide my every need also man I wake up every Father's Day or every May 13th and that whole those two days man I'm full of tears you know and I'm also full of joy I wish baby Ray could be here to see what he taught me and what I try to impart into my son. So I know a lot of fathers out there personally, and I see a lot of fathers, man, every day or during the course of the day. Hey, man, y'all keep up that good work. Because being a father, man, means providing for your children. Being a father means, man, putting your kids before you. Disciplining your kids, man, because right now what we have is a generation, and I'm not, please, don't take this the wrong way, ladies. But now what we have is a generation of young single mothers who 
have been indoctrinated by a system to not need a man. I mean, how many of y'all hear a woman sit up here and say, I don't need a man. I'm my kids, mama and daddy. I'm going to just keep it real, ladies. I know a lot of ladies that have done a great job of raising their, their, their children, and especially their, their boys. But there's no way on, the, on this planet that a mother can be a father or a father can be a mother. That, that is just the words themselves do not correlate. You cannot be a mother and be a father. You cannot be a father and you can and be a mother. God created it that way. There are certain things inherently that a man can do for his children, for his sons especially, that a woman can't do. There are certain inherited things that a woman can do for her daughter that a man can't. It's all about man being humble and submissive, but most important in most cases, sacrificing our wants and desires as parents for the the needs and protection of our children. Again, I just want to say happy Father Day to all the fathers out there, man, and to all you young black cats, young black men that I be seeing out here, man, doing a great job raising your kids. Hey, let's continue to prove that old stereotype wrong, man, where black men are absent. Nah, man, it's just we're living in a culture and a society that devalues the job of a father and would rather promote the, uh, the idea of a single mother, you know? It's crazy the society that we're living in, but we don't have to take part in that craziness. Hey man, if you can't do nothing but provide your children with food, shelter, and dedication to their education, hey, you're a great father, man. You're a good father, you know? Never let nobody tell you just because you uh, can't be in a part, a part of your child, your children's life on a day-to-day -day basis that you are not a good father, you know. Me, myself, man, I struggle, bruh. And my little man, though, it's a trip. I sit back sometimes and he look at me, man, and first thing he say, you all right, Dad? And I will be like, yeah, son. And I always got to keep a smile on my face. This little dude don't know the struggle that I go through just to put food on the table. He don't know the struggle I go through, man, just to keep a roof over his head. And guess what? He'll never know because I don't let him see that. Again, there's been, like right now, man, I'm in such a, a tight, desperate situation. Whereas in the past, I knew how to go out there and change my situation. Get out there in them streets, man, and make, shit, make stuff happen. But today, it's a little bit different. Because even though I'm struggling, man, and times are hard, I'd rather go through that hard struggle than get out here in these streets and jeopardize myself to, I, to the point where I never see my son again. You know? Man, I remember back in 2012, my son was only two years old, man. He stood there and watched all them law enforcement agencies take me to jail. And I was facing a life sentence, man, behind selling some marijuana. And at that time, I was selling marijuana to take care of him. Because I was, you know, it was just me and him, man, and shit was hard. And that little boy was standing there in his pamper, man, and watched all them people take me away. And then when I found out what I was facing and realized they was trying to give me life, I cried out to the Heavenly Father. And I didn't say, Lord, if you do this for me, I'll never do this again. No, I just simply said, please, Father in heaven, don't let these folk take me away from my son because he need me. And man, for them, the, all the months I was locked up, all I could do was think about my son. And Jehovah took me from a life sentence down to seven years and I wound up spending that on four year probation, but God gave me back to my son. Now that is the father. He answers all I need. So I, my advice to every father out there, imitate the creator, you know? Imitate the creator as the heavenly father in, in your children's life and you can't go wrong because like I say, when I, when I got out of jail, um, almost a year later, I dedicated myself to forever being in my son's life. Like now, I don't get dang how t how hard the situation is, man. How desperate we are, uh, uh, are financially. I refuse to do anything that's gonna take me out of my son's life. 
He needs me, man. I need him. He gives me strength, and I give him life. And it's a two-way street. You know, again, if you imitate the Heavenly Father, there's no way you can go wrong. You know, again, up, up in heaven, man, I wish the people in heaven could hear, or the people who we once loved that are no longer with us could hear. And if they could, I'd tell my daddy, man, I would hug him and kiss him on the cheek and tell him just how, just how much he meant to me, man. And all I want to do, again, is just be half the dad that my daddy was to me to my son. I wish he could see my son right now, man. You'd be so proud of him, Pops. For real, though. But again, man, I'm in my feelings right now because, like I said, the last few days, man, I've been sick as heck. Ain't been able to get up, eat, or do nothing, man. But the only thing I can do is make sure that my son eats. Is make sure my son has a place to stay, has clothes on his back. And guess what? It really ain't my doing. It's because the Creator sees what I'm doing and how dedicated I am to imitating him and he gives me life and strength to impart into my son so hey y'all have a blessed day man let me go get this steak up off the grill i just did this man you know outside of that real new behind the news thing because life is to me is more than just the real new behind the news life to me is about excuse me folks about that little big head dude right here check him out look at that little big head he don't know what he want, afro or what? Dad love you, boy. <laughs> this is my world. This is my heart. Every day when he see me trouble, he see me trouble, he, he can look at my eyes first thing. He say, you okay, Dad? And he kiss me on the forehead. And he said, all right, it's going to be all right. This is why I do what I do, so he can have a future. It's all about him. It ain't about me. Look at him, he's going to pick this afro out. He wanted an afro and I won't even keep it coming. <laughs> That's my little big man. So again, happy Father Day, y'all. Y'all be blessed.